Now, pretty much for as long as I can remember, I've wanted to build a gaming PC using exclusively Wishcraft. So when Toasty Bros reached out saying that they want to enter the deathmatch arena of death, AliExpress versus Wish, I had to accept the gauntlet that had been thrown. And after winning the coin toss, I had to choose Wish because I'm pretty much fulfilling a lifelong dream at this point, or like a like a three year long dream. Before we get into that though, we need to hear from today's video sponsor that helped pay for whatever is about to happen. Better, stronger, and more virile. The Corsair 5000T is a powerhouse of a case, preloaded down with enough RGB to make any 14 year old weep. And with its cavernous interior and generous radiator support, you can fit enough cooling to satiate even the most insane NVIDIA engineer's appetite. So get the 5000T using the link in the video description. When it comes to the budget for the showdown, we decided on 800 US dollars, and that is not including tax and shipping. I may have screwed up my budget a little, but we'll get into that a bit later. First, let's unbox all the Wish crap. Wow, I've actually kind of missed the Wish plastic dumpster bags. Although, in all fairness to Wish, all this stuff shipped in like two weeks, which is very impressive for Wish. Oh, and I'll have Toasty Bros video with their AliExpress build linked in the description below. So go and check out their efforts so you can clearly compare the quality of the two systems. Let's start with the big bag. Wow, that's like most of the PC in there. Okay, that's quite promising. Description of contents and that seems to be the name of a CPU I recognize. I can't quite remember if that's the one I bought because it's been a while. Ugh. That is a lot of bubble wrap. It's nice to see that whatever they sent is nice and safe. That's a really nice touch. They add a little sachet of thermal paste with the CPU. And then it seems to actually be the CPU that it says on the box. That is a very good start. Well done, Wish. Let's check out the next random package. Next, let's try the two random envelopes. We've got hard disk, and I actually splurged for this, getting a 240 gig SSD. Oh, it's a Kingdian drive, okay. I've used one of these in a build a while ago and it was a functional SSD. And this one is 240 gigs. What a beauty. Ugh, because of all the plastic, shopping on Wish really feels like lobotomizing a turtle. Ugh. It's not the sexiest looking RAM, but it should get the job done. One thing that's kind of weird about it though, it comes with a tiny little screwdriver and a bunch of case screws. That is a very unusual accessory for RAM, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I've ever seen that before, but I guess it's a nice touch. This one kind of looks like it's got its teeth kicked in a bit. Apparently, it is a computer supply, which I'm assuming is the power supply. I think this is the least confidence-inspiring power supply box I have ever seen. Oh, never mind, it says professional on it, so it's probably very good. Just wrapped it in some more soft plastic for good measure. Oof, that is a very light, hollow-feeling power supply. <laughs> Although apparently it's a thousand watt power supply, which I think makes this the bargain of the century. This thing has some real IED ignition source vibes to it. And this is a Cool Moon MX6 CPU cooler, which is apparently quiet, hydraulic, and only has a 90 millimeter fan. Hopefully that Xeon's not too hard for it to cool. Whoa, that is six heat pipes that make direct contact with the CPU beneath. And then we've got these little towers. It actually kind of looks like a little baby Noctua NHD 15. The fans actually have very crudely implemented LEDs on the inside, so they're even gonna light up. This again actually seems like a reasonable CPU cooler. I love how all it takes for Wish to impress you is just getting a product that doesn't look like it's gonna give you dysentery. Ooh, a dumpster bag inside a dumpster bag. 
It's always very promising when the box that your new motherboard's probably in looks like it was used as a seat cushion by the delivery driver. It's even more promising when the rear I.O. shield looks like it's been involved in a fire recently. But at least we get a nice sachet of thermal paste with the motherboard. What happened to this rear I.O. shield? Well, there's our motherboard. I get the distinct impression this motherboard was saved from a PC that survived a warehouse fire. Look at that. Nice creative use of a piece of paper. There's a socket protector there. I'm sure that's delivery driver butt proof. When it comes to the graphics card, I was quite brave. According to Wish, this is an RTX 2060. But this is Wish we're talking about, one of the most reliable sources of scam graphics cards in the world. So chances are very high this is just a fake GTS 450. Hey! It may very well be debating me here, but this actually looks like a real box. What the hell? Well, I'll be damned. That actually looks like a real RTX 3060. It doesn't even seem to have any of the telltale scam graphics card signs. We even get a backplate on this bad boy. That's awesome. Now we just need to hope it works, but this is a really good start so far. Oh, no way, it's a Corsair case. That's just a new in-box Corsair 100R. To me, it seems a bit like Wish has reformed a little bit, going from a scam retailer to just a mostly crappy retailer. Uh, having said that, we don't know if any of this stuff works yet, so let's build the PC and find out. First, we need to talk about the budget. This is what everything cost, bringing us to a total of about 827 Canadian dollars. And if we use the exchange rate at the time when I bought all this stuff, our grand total is about 660 US dollars, about $130 under budget. But it's not my fault. Buying stuff on Wish is really hard. Everything's either weirdly cheap or stupidly expensive. When it comes to CPUs and motherboards, if you want anything more modern than that old Xeon I bought, you're looking at hundreds of dollars more. So my choice was either go $130 under budget or $130 over budget, and I'd much rather go under than over. But that does mean that the Toasty Bros system is most likely gonna curb stomp mine in terms of performance. But, like I've said so many times in today's video, that is future David's problem. First, let's assemble the weird abomination and see if it even works. Now I'd say the first step is to prep the house fire victim motherboard for installation. I'm gonna be real brave about it and not test the system box top before installing it into a case, just cause I like to live dangerously, you know? Okay, let's see the state of the pins under that paper socket cover. It actually kind of seems like the bit of paper did its job. Those pins look fine. Now, considering the fact that they gave us a screwdriver with the RAM, I kind of feel like I need to try and build the PC using only the screwdriver, which feels like a really stupid idea, considering that that is one of the smallest Phillips head screwdrivers I think I've ever seen. We are using DDR3, which meant that this 16 gigs was actually quite affordable even though it came with a screwdriver. Next, I think we should mount the Kirkland brand NHD15 on the little CPU. Wow, that's not very much mounting hardware. It almost seems like some variation of stock Intel cooler mounting plastic clip MacGyver. On the little bracket, it tells you which notch to slip the little plastic thingy in. So I think we need to do the middle notch. And then in terms of thermal paste, I'm gonna use the very kindly supplied sachet of thermal paste. Squeeze that out onto there. Wow, that is a lot of thermal paste. And then the cooler should go on quite straightforward. We just... Oh, wow, that felt very much like I was destroying the earth. And with that, I think we can start prepping the case now. That is a very plain black box of- Ow! 
Although I'm not really complaining, at least it pretends to have some ventilation on the front. Ooh, we get some acoustic foam on the inside of the side panel. There's even acoustic foam on the top of the case and along the back side panel. Although the case does feel like it's made out of melted down bits of spam can. Oh, that is a shockingly disgusting rear IO shield. And it actually feels like if you push too hard, you're gonna break the back of the case out. Oh, there we go, that is, that is in. Next up, I'm gonna install the power supply and wow, there is very little going on inside this thousand watt power supply. I'd be surprised if this doesn't explode by the end of the video. It even comes with a single supplemental 8-pin graphics power cable. That is some fancy 1000 watt power supply action. Now this is a bit of an odd problem to have, but neither the case nor the power supply come with the correct power supply mounting screws, so I'm gonna have to use some from my own stash. Oh, this really is a screwdriver for ants, but it seems to be doing the job. Yeah, these little RAM screwdrivers are great. Linus should have just licensed these. Yeah, why spend years trying to design a screwdriver when the perfect screwdriver is just bundled with Wish RAM all along? Yeah, you know, like magnetized tips are such a bougie invention. Oh. Yeah, the thread is too big, so the screwdriver actually can't screw these screws in. Okay, I'm gonna have to use an inferior screwdriver for this. Hey, so now we just need to cable manage this bad boy, then we can drop a GPU in there and see if it actually works, which I am excited. And I immediately ran into a problem. Well, that is a very poorly placed cable routing hole, and I think it means I may have to route the CPU power up around the front like some kind of animal. But plugging in the CPU power was way easier said than done. Uh, uh, oh, come on! But I figured it out eventually. Yes! Oh, it's finally in! Luckily, the rest of the cable management was a bit easy. the moment we've all been waiting for. Will this bucket of crap actually start up or explode, taking me with it? Let's find out. No way. Ooh, we've got some RGB happening. Very nice. Although my excitement was short-lived, despite the mesmerizing RGB and a restart, the system just wouldn't post. The problem is we don't have any kind of like boot LEDs or anything like that on the motherboard. So it's gonna be very hard to diagnose any issues with it. My first thought was that I screwed up with the CPU and motherboard pairing. How much do you wanna bet that CPU isn't compatible with this motherboard? Yay, luckily I had a CPU lying in a pile somewhere that I could use to test the motherboard. But swapping out the CPU was again easier said than done. That is a really stupid mount. It won't unclip. With tensions rising, I decided to remove the motherboard for easier access. What is this mount? Am I just really dumb? See, it just doesn't unclip. And it just pulls the whole cooler over. I don't know, man. The rage of a thousand suns is building up in me here. Come on! Okay, I'm gonna get gloves. Oh! There we go. Now two things. First off, considering that I had to use the power of an enraged hippo to unclip that, I hope I didn't break the motherboard. And the second thing is I forgot to remove the film of plastic on the bottom of the CPU cooler. Uh, now that's not why it wasn't booting, 
but um, yeah, it's it's good that it didn't boot, because otherwise it would have caught on fire. A little embarrassing. Now, swiftly moving attention back to the terrible CPU cooler, with the mounting in place, you can't remove the CPU, so you have to take the whole bracket off. Oh, I really wish I tested this system before I finished building it. Now, to spare you from having to witness a whole bunch more shouting, long story short, after spending hours testing different CPUs and looking for new BIOSes and whatever, the problem was that IED ignition source power supply. It just wasn't working. After I swapped it out, the system just kind of worked fine. So now that we figured out what's wrong with the system and I lost a couple of years of life expectancy, let's see how the system runs. Um, I may have skimped on the CPU a little bit too hard in this build, uh, but in my defense, any reasonably modern CPU, they sell for like a starting price of $8 million. So it was either this or nothing, to be honest. Which unfortunately means the RTX 2060 is not really doing a whole lot in GTA 5. But generally, the temperatures are pretty good and it's relatively quiet. Uh, with that, let's try a more demanding game. Now, Battlefield 5 at 1080p high settings is running almost better than GTA 5, which doesn't seem to like quad cores very much. And as you can see, the temperatures have jumped up significantly. I've been playing for about 20 minutes now. Honestly, it's running better than I was expecting, and it's utilizing more of the RTX 2060. Although, if we got a better CPU, we would have gotten a lot more performance. So I'm actually kind of hoping that Toasty Bros also couldn't get a very powerful CPU because that's gonna be the easiest way for them to beat this system. Cyberpunk, preset high, 1080p, and um, we're almost at 60 frames per second. That may not be a very high frame rate, but it's quite a smooth delivery of that frame rate. In the same way that with GTA 5, we didn't have a very high frame rate, but it was quite a smooth delivery. The fact that this is a Wish gaming system that doesn't have a fake GTS 450 in it kind of blows my mind a little bit. Now, in terms of benchmarks for comparing with the Toasty Bros system, we agreed on GTA 5 at high settings, Cyberpunk at high settings, and Cinebench R20. So go watch their video to decide who was the winner of this deathmatch arena of death. And with that, what did we learn in today's video? Well, if a power supply emerges from a dumpster bag like a Nazgul, you probably shouldn't plug it into your system. Anyway, thank you for watching. Before you go and check out Toasty Bros' system, just stick around for an alternate intro to this video that I decided to not use. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Until the next video, bye-bye. The year is 1731. A gauntlet was cast from the house of Bro Toasty, challenging the Alliance of Darwin to a showdown in the deathmatch arena of death. AliExpress versus Wish. Who will prevail?